Today's Health Watch with Labor Day coming up. Many of us are hitting the road and spending time outside. Yes, and of course, important to stay safe during the holiday and not spoil it with a trip to the emergency room. So Melanie Wizardo is the Injury Prevention Coordinator at Swedish Medical Center. Thanks so much for joining us, first of all. We appreciate it. So heat stroke, uh, dehydration, sunburn, and swimming accidents are the top four hazards uh, for Labor Day weekend. Tell us a little bit about that, and I know you have some props here as well with swimming. Let's start with the swimming. Okay. Accidents. Yeah, so drowning is something that we will see Labor Day weekend, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Um, most commonly, it's ages one to four. And what we hear is that the parents of these kiddos expect a dramatic show when drowning happens, like you see on TV, flailing around, screaming. That's just not the case. Most drownings are silent um, and happen very quickly. So having preventative measures to make sure that doesn't happen is gonna be key. So I brought these here to educate you on a couple of things. So this here is most commonly known as a puddle jumper. If we take the side pieces off, we know these as floaties. This is a flotation device. It's not the ideal flotation device. Really, you want a life vest, um, something that says US Coast Guard approved on it, that's gonna be the best thing. What happens is, is when you wear something like this, it puts you in an upright position. That is not a life-saving position, that is a drowning position, all right? So when a kid gets in the water without a flotation device and is used to wearing this, they're gonna go into that upright position yep. instead of onto their back. Um, a life vest is a more natural buoyancy right. to get them onto their back. That's right, right. that's right. And also uh, Labor Day weekend, uh, unfortunately brings some uh, drunk driving crashes. Is there anything you can teach us to help uh, stop the bleed in these situations, if you will? Yeah, so Stop the Bleed is a huge program that we run. Um, Really, that first responder is going to be you, the first person that enters the scene. So knowing how to pack a wound, um, apply pressure, and apply a tourniquet is key, okay? So if you apply a tourniquet, you wanna put it proximal to the wound. So that's two to three finger widths above the wound. Very, very tight. Don't ever release the tourniquet until medical help arrives. That's good advice Really there. good advice. Yeah. Well, we know there's a common firework related injury and they are legal in our state, sparklers. So uh, what kind of injuries do you see from them and what should people keep in mind? Yeah, sparklers seem really benign. I mean, yeah. kids use them, but they do get to over 2000 degrees, which can melt metals. Mm. Um, they catch fire to close really quickly um, and they're super dangerous. That's the most common firework related injury we see. So try and avoid them. Um, ribbon wands are fun, streamers, things like that. Leave any kind of fireworks to adults. And the last question here, you know, a lot of us are firing up the grill myself included <laughs> here. Uh, that can lead to a lot of prevent preventable injuries and fires. So we should make sure to clean up afterwards. But what can we do if we get, you know, a, an accidental burn? Yeah, so if you get an accidental burn, you want to apply like a cool, moist dressing to it. Um, get to a facility as soon as you can to address the burn. Uh, don't put it under super cold water or super hot water. If you're gonna put it under water, make sure it's like more of a temperate type of thing. Um, yeah, cool, wet dressing, yeah. get to somewhere to get treated. Yeah. All of it is great, just yeah. great advice here. We appreciate it. Melanie, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Of course. And if you want to see this interview or other Health Watch interviews, just go to our website, cbscolorado.com.